Blessings to each of you. This is Marvelous Monday. Yesterday was an awesome day, but a, a bit tiring for the old lady. But I'm grateful to be alive and I'm grateful to have a reasonable portion of health and strength. And I'm requesting that you pray, continue to pray for me, pray for my husband and pray for his caregiver. Amen. We believe in the Lord to touch your body. And uh, when we go sometimes for physicals, we don't always know uh, what's going to come of that. So um, I'm praying for her. and She's requesting that the Wessons pray for her. And we're doing that because I know um, God has his hands on her life. Uh, I just want to also thank you for supporting me on yesterday. Um, you supported me by viewing the broadcast. Uh, some of you viewed it on Lake Views, <clears throat> excuse me, page, and some of you viewed me on my page. I had someone at the ch the church who had committed um, uh, herself to um, to record, and she did. and I saw some of you making comments, and I really appreciate that. And I thank God for the West Haven family. Everybody wasn't there. It would have been on, on, and on. But, oh, so many came from my church. And um, as small as we are, we filled up. There are three huge sections in that church, and we filled up almost half of one of those sections. And so I'm, I'm so appreciative of my West Haven family. I want you to know that I love you and that I could not do what I do without you. I want the ladies even um, in the jurisdiction to know how much I love them and that I could not do what I do uh, without them. There are two that are right by my side year round and they keep things rolling and whatever I ask them to do, they do it without um, hesitation or reservation. And I'm so grateful for that. That does not have to be that way. And I thank God for those who step up to the plate that he's called to work right there beside me to so that I can finish my course. Amen. And so I love each and every one of you. <clears throat> I posted, excuse me, this weather here in Memphis uh, and around surrounding Mississippi areas in the uh, Mid-South here. We're getting ready. They say we're getting ready to have um, ice and um power outages and what have you. And so it keeps you, uh, the weather's up one day and down the next and 40 degrees one day, 30 some degrees one day, 59, 60 something. And so um, it's, you just have to learn to adjust. So that's why I keep clearing my throat, but please forgive me. Um, but I <clears throat> posted the title, where do we go from here? And I don't normally address a whole lot of of things that are violent in the community, uh, I pray. But I, um, it is just so much going on. And um, I just think that we need to realize that, first of all, that God is sovereign, that he has not lost control. Satan has the, um, he's on a leash but he has a certain amount of power that God has allowed him to have because it's because of him that we can exercise our freedom of choice. So Satan presents his side of life, his side of, of, of the story, and then God has his side of the story, but God is over all, he's sovereign. And so we have to remember that regardless of what's happening, it's the heinous crimes and uh, black on black, uh, black on uh, uh, white on black, whatever. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning, darling. Whatever the case might be, what helps me in the midst of all of this is to know that God is still in control. He's allowing some things to happen. And in the midst of it, you know, the just, we, we go through, we're blessed and we, we go through when the wicked are punished. Um, he protects us, but we still have the, 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 the residue of some things that the, that the people do that are sinners. But in the midst of it all, he works all of it out for our good. Because we are, first of all, we love God and we are the called. This being said, um, 
like I say, I don't normally address, you know, heinous crimes and and all of that, heinous crimes. But we got posed the, the question, um, what should be the um, the mindset of the believer is this has happened. It's still happening con- uh, all the time. Um, it happened in the past. It's going on now. Where do we go from here? What do we do because of this? And this gives a signal to the church, a signal to the believers that we have a job to do. Some of us are not witnessing. Some of us are not putting the word out there. One of the young men um, in our church, well, he's a gentleman. Um, He's in his, I think he's in his 60s, should be in his early 60s or whatever. And he has been um, delivered from drugs. He's testifying of being delivered from drugs and God has put him on a new journey. So he joined our church. His sister is one of the evangelist missionaries at our church. And in his heart, it's like, I've wasted so much time. Now, this just this should be in the heart hearts and minds of the believers who've been in here, who who are seasoned and what have you. His heart is, I want to work with the prison ministry. I got to give back. I got to, he realizes that time is short. And if he's going to do something for the Lord, he's got to do it now. And so I was so, even though I'm not going to let him get, push himself out there too far because he's still a babe and the enemy can trick and and trap him. But I saw the zeal and um, some according to knowledge, some parts of it is not according to knowledge because he's growing. And sometimes babies don't know the danger of putting your hand on the heater, you know, so we have to watch out for them, nurture them. But my thing is his attitude uh, is I, the souls need to be saved. I need to be doing my part. And my thing to us, we discuss it, we uh, disagree with each other online and all of that. And the bottom line is you got you even have some people who are bashing people who didn't want to watch the video of the young man that was killed in Memphis. You know, we 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 are going we're going to argue over those things as James in the book of James it says. You know, where come from? Whence come at these wars and the rumors of war? Uh, what's in us? The devil creates issues among us, and so the church becomes um, inactive. We're not activated when we are on the sidelines discussing, debating, disagreeing, fussing and arguing over something that we have no control over. We do have a say in this by accepting these things as a signal that uh, Christ is soon to come back and that there's too many people who need to hear the gospel that are not hearing it because we are not giving it. We're spending our time in things that are distracting us, even personal things that are going on in our lives. And we still have to understand that we must regroup immediately, regroup immediately, and then say, God, okay, where do we go from here? What should I be doing now that this is happening? We see the spirit is prevalent. What is your assignment to us? We are not many of not many of us are doing that. And so uh, there's one pastor on there. I see he's responding like I think uh, God will want us to respond and uh, not with being uh, critical of um, anybody, uh, because even though those things happen, these are souls. Yes, there um, are rules and guidelines and laws and there. And when you don't obey the rules and guidelines and laws of the government, the Bible, good morning, sugar. Good morning, Alicia. When you don't obey those, though, you may give your life to Christ. But the Bible in the New Testament speaks of obeying the laws of the land. And so when you do things that violate that, then guess what? There you have to suffer the punishment behind it. I'm sure there are a number of inmates who have died in prison and died in jail. Um, They were saved. 
they repented of their sins, but they had to satisfy the government and they lost their lives or they died in prison. Or they spent most of their time locked up. And so the question comes, as far as I'm concerned, to the body of Christ, to, to the church, to the members of the body, where do we go from here? What should we be doing? I encourage the people at West Haven to witness to somebody, one person, share Christ with one person every week, hopefully more. You're going to run into a whole lot of people pretty much. But you need to understand this is not a choice if you want to obey God. You can choose not to obey him when you choose not to witness Then you're choosing to uh, be disobedient. And there are consequences that come with disobedience. And so once again, my question is, where do we go from here? What should we do now? What what is going on in the mind of God? that I can uh, know what he's, his will is for us and know what should we be doing specifically. What is his rhema word to me? What is his word through me to other people uh, regarding the things that are going on <clears throat> in our community and in our lives? And so my thing is that if you've not been sharing Christ, then your uh, the Holy Spirit needs to be reactivated in you to do what you're supposed to be doing. And so you've not heard me really speak out against uh, the the, vi the uh, victim that was uh, that lost his life. You have not heard me speak out against the those that were involved because st it is still what it is. And my thing is, you see it, you see that spirit in the earth, you see that spirit in the community, um, the best thing that we can do is what God has already uh, mandated that we do, and that is witness and pray. Pray for those who despitefully use us. Pray for those in our family. Pray for those people in these governmental positions. And, and we put these people in there. And so that's part of our civic duty. The Bible tells us to do our civic duty. So I will not, I've not been, been, God hasn't spoken to me and said, address this concern and then address that. He's going to address it. <clears throat> He's going to deal with it because there's a law of reciprocity. Whatever you uh, sow, that, that same thing you shall also reap. So we pray for the souls of people. We pray that somebody will be able to reach them, uh, give them the gospel, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. And then we try to work toward uh, being proactive to uh, do some preventative measures by uh, witnessing to, I mean, uh, sharing the gospel with our own sons and grandsons and, and, and neighbors and nephews and, and what have you. And, 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 and when we do that, we know that God is pleased. We don't always know what to do in the midst of something like this. Immediately for me though, is to pray uh, the Lord will give us who to, whom to pray for. When we hear the news, we'll kind of know uh, what we need to be praying. Uh, but uh, where do we go from here? The church is the the healer in the in the in the world. Uh, the, the the everybody should be looking at the church. What is the church doing? Um, what did the church um, lie dormant and allow this to happen? Uh, it, it God permitted because he wanted to us to see the state that we're in. All I know is that God is in control and he will give us what to do because he said all souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And so um, we need to ask individually, where do we go from here? If you're already obeying God, you really you may want to step it up a, a bit, but you all you should already be doing what needs to be done. Uh, like I said, I encourage West Haven in the uh, area of prayer, the word, and then uh, you got to be able to witness. Regardless of what your gifting is, regardless of what your calling is, everybody in the body of Christ has been given the assignment in the kingdom to go therefore, preach and teach the gospel, go therefore and give the word of God.
witness to the people wherever you go. Be a witness. Sometimes the witness comes from on the job. You can't say a lot. It's just by how you conduct yourself. Uh, what comes out of your mouth when you engage in conversation uh, with various people on your job. I wouldn't think that it would be wise for you uh, to do some things on that job because you are hired by that company. Now, if that door, God will open that door because uh, people can watch your life and watch your behavior and watch how you handle things in your life, even adversities. And that will be a means of drawing people. It's a means of bringing people, uh, hooking people on the fit on the fishing pole <clears throat> so that you can catch, uh, uh, get their undivided attention. They want to know, um, how do you make it like that? Um, I'm in the midst of something and I, I, I feel like doing this and I feel that's a, a door open that leads you into conversation where you can witness to people. And so we're so quick to want to um, get violent. Um, we're so quick to want to run our mouths and give our opinions. Our opinions mean nothing to God. As a matter of fact, in my case, in some cases, your opinion doesn't matter to me. It's about what is the will of God? What does he, what would he have me to do right now? If you're in the midst of something, a squabble or something, the question is, what God would you have me to do right now? It's not, I got a right and I've got a right. All, you know, God may want you to suffer some things just so that he can be glorified, but you won't know that if you don't have a closer relationship to you're in Christ, meaning you're in a relationship with Christ. And so uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Oftentimes I, I share, um, well, every now and then uh, about theologically, um, God is the, is the head headship. That's why it's called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so God the Father um, will do what his assignment is to do. He's the headship, he's the leader, but the Holy, the, but Jesus Christ will always do what the father wants him to do. He says, when my father is working, I'm working. Whatever he, you know, in other words, God is already speaking to me. I'm carrying out what I should be carrying out. And then the Holy Spirit is alerted to the uh, instructions or the will of Jesus Christ. And so they work in um, together. They work together. And so you need to hear from the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is the power in the earth. And the church has that power. We've been given that power and the authority to do certain things, not what you want to do, not your own plan, but to do certain things that God has ordained. And then Jesus knows that's God's will. This is how he came down. He says, look at the condition of my people. And then Jesus says, look, prepare me a body. I will go down and I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take it upon me. I'll, I'll go to the cross. I'll shed the blood for the remission of sins. And so he came. They tried to kill him. The conversation came up yesterday after I got home. They tried to kill him. Uh, some people don't know if you study your Bible. Um, some of these, some of the wise men and all, they're not, uh, there's more information about them. But when Herod called uh, them into his uh, office, so to speak, um, he was trying to act like he wanted to find the Savior. Oh, I want to go and worship him. No, he was not. And so they were told, now you go you go another way home. Don't, because they're gonna, he's gonna have you followed. Amen. And so it has been an all out uh effort of, of the devil. You know, when he took Jesus up on the pinnacle of the temple, he tried every way he could to destroy our our, our savior. Uh, and so um, we need to know that. And we're not out here by ourselves. We're not uh, beating the air, as Paul says. We're not beating the wind, the air. Uh, we're not involved in something that's erroneous. We're not involved in something that's really stupid. We are in the body of Christ. And we matter to God. 
what happens to us matters to him. But the only way that we're going to be able to know him and stay in that close relationship with him is to spend time with him, spend time in the word of God and be obedient to whatever he tells us to do. The blessings can't even be uh, measured when you obey. It's like with my children. When I, I'll give my children what they need. Um, I'm supposed to feed them and clothe them. But the, ba- the child that does that extra to be obedient, they get a little bit something on the side there because they are working every way they can to please mom, to please dad or whatever. We, we reward them. Uh, for going that extra mile for being obedient, not running off and and knowing that you, you know, could have gone off and I didn't know where you were. Whatever those things were, you went that extra mile to make sure you pleased your parent, mom or dad. Well, the Lord has blessings in store for all of us, but when we commit our lives to him. You got some people that are saved, but they're not committed. They're not committed to the things of God. They're not committed to what God has called them to do. So when you have people who don't do that, then you miss, because he wants to open the windows of heaven. He he will not withhold any good thing from us, but that's on condition. Now he'll, uh, he promised to feed us and clothe us and give us a roof over our heads. But that person that goes beyond the call of duty to make sure that will suffer for the cause of Christ, the Lord just may turn around and give them a mansion. He has his way of measuring what he doles out to us. And so we trust him. We trust him to give us what we need. We trust him to uh, give us the desires of our heart. But it all has to be under the sovereign uh, we are in the sovereign purpose of God. And so where do we go from here? We step up our our, our activity. Uh, we make it our business to try to find more people to witness to. We we uh, submit ourselves even more to the Lord. Uh, uh, we um, decide that we're going to do a greater work. We're going to take this thing and cover more territory. We come to the conclusion that we come to because we've been in communion with the Lord. And when you're in communion with him, he will open himself up to you for you to see. But in the Old Testament, it says that, I think it's in um, Jeremiah 29, it says that, you know, I'm going to allow them, talking about the children of Israel, I'm going to allow them to find me. That's an awesome passage to me. It says, I'm going to allow them to find me. God will allow us to seek him and find him and he will grant to us the desires of our heart. Because sometimes we can desire things because uh, the human, the fleshy part of us, it's, it's comforting. It, it brings its own personal rewards. And so, but it might not be in the will of God and his perfect will. And, and so, and when it comes to God's sovereignty, there's no changing that. There's no change. When it's sovereign, it means it will not change. You, you may as well accept what the Lord allows, accept his purpose, accept his plan, and then ask him, how now, how do I work within the context of your plan and purpose for me? This is why it's important to know your identity. This is why it's important that you um, stay in that close relationship with him and he will reveal to you who you are, why he brought you into the earth and how he wants you to operate in and he will let you know what anointing he's uh, placed upon your life. It took me a while to do that, to accept um, the anointed uh, gifting. Um, I can't take any credit for it. Um, but you can't do very well when you don't acknowledge who you are and what you're able to do. When you do a resume, you don't do a resume and put yourself down. When you do a resume, you're taking the plus points in your life, in your career, in your whatever, and you wanting people to know that I can handle what you need me to handle because these are my experiences. This is who I am. 
And so it took me a while to acknowledge who I really was because it was so much going on around me, so many voices, uh, people asking me to do things they thought from a kid, what they thought I was able to do. And then and amidst all of that noise, I had to eventually, God was bringing me to that place to eventually acknowledge or to find out or to discover who I really was. Uh, there are times I would feel and accept and then I would go right back because somebody did something to me or said something to me or said something against me or whatever. And so it took me a while to grow up in that area because you're not very effective when you don't have confidence. And my confidence was more in people and what they thought versus confidence in the God who created me, confidence in the Christ who shed his blood for me, confidence in the Holy Spirit who anoints me and keeps me and strengthens me uh, during this journey. And so now um, I realize it took me a while. I had to study. Sometimes in my study, I get bits and pieces of the puzzle concerning me. It would it would strike something and go like, wow. And when I began to put all of the jigsaw puzzle pieces together, I said, this is who I am. It's not about who my mom is, even though she influenced my life. It's not about who my father was. It's not about any of that. He knew I would come through there alone, but he also knew his purpose and plan for me before the foundation of the world, before I was even conceived. And so how can you fight that? How can you let somebody on the sidelines uh, discredit you or push you somewhere that God didn't tell you to go? And so it took me a while because I had to study um, to, in order to teach, teach Sunday school, teach the people. I had to study the word of God. I had to go beyond what most people would do because that was my, that my anointing. That had to do with what I was called to do. And so the Lord finally um, convinced me, you are part of the fivefold ministry gifts. You operate in the gift of the teacher. And he said, this is your, your main calling. But along with that calling, I've given you other gifts that operate on a, another level, but the number one gift. And so I called you to... Um, teach the people. I call you to teach the laity, if there's such a thing. I don't think so. But the people who don't claim to have a title are the babes in Christ. I call you to teach them. And I also call you to teach teachers. And I call you to pass on to them what they're going to need in the route that I'm taking them. Don't don't push yourself on them. Don't push your personality on them. Push the word in them. And then I'll guide them. As you push the word and on the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you push the word and they grab the word and they eat the word and they live on the word that you give to them. Train them. I will take them and show them how I want them to execute because of the anointing that I placed on their lives. So I, I did that with my children, not knowing this was a gift in me. I looked at all four of my children. They, they were spread apart, you all, seven years apart, nine years apart, um, three years apart. And um, I looked at them and I looked for evidence of where God had placed something in them, if it was a talent, uh, whether it was, um, um, and my children are gifted in, in the area of music, uh, or whether that their, their strong points was in the area of the English language, um, grammar, um, literature, or whether their uh, gift and calling would lie in the area of, of the sciences or uh, whatever. I, I, I look for that in them and then train up a child means find out what I put in them and then you do your job as a parent to guide them in that direction. That's what train up, a, go, go and study it, 
Train up a child uh, doesn't mean just the spanking. Train up a child means, first of all, observe them, pray over them, find out what I've already put in them. You can't take it them in another direction. And I did that not knowing that was a gift. I did not know it. I just knew it with my inner man. I just knew it. And so <clears throat> I guided each one of my children as best I could along with my husband. That was my gifting um, along with my husband uh, to see what's there. And so I, I recognize that all of them are gifted in the area of music from piano to voice. Um, and so I try to, how do, you, how do you do that, mother? You pray over them, you see it, you recognize it, and you feed it. Oh, God, thank you. You feed that seed. God, I thank you. Somebody type that in for me. Feed that seed in your child. You feed it. You you give it opportunities. I, my son, I saw he was really gifted in drawing, and, and they had a summer program. I tried to find what I could afford for the summer, and I put him in. There was this art store. They sold uh, paintings for canvases, and, and, and they had a little class that they would have in the back. Uh, they teach the children how to draw and how to paint and what have you. And I put him in there and it was just I thought that was going to be some the direction he was going. But he is in the arts, that side of his brain. But he as he grew, I said, I'm going to put him put all my children in piano because piano to me is the basic. And if you can do something with piano other than even just singing the notes on it, uh, at least you knew how to pluck on the piano. So he was the one that took that opportunity and he was in Overton High School, uh, majored in um, classical music, and he is a music producer today, uh, lives in LA. And then all of my children, one uh, I didn't realize until it took me a while to really find her. She signs for the deaf like a pro, never had a class. I sent her to a mime thing for the church and I didn't realize she'd picked it up and she found deaf friends so she could sign for the deaf like a pro. But also, I realized that um, in trying to figure out what was going on there, she had an, uh, an adeptness for the um, the sciences. And so she took that from my husband. And so she's a, a traveling CNA and she's working on her uh, a degree. She's working on her degree to get her BS in, uh, BAPT, well, is that the BS in? Yeah, BS in nursing. And so then I have my oldest daughter, took me a while with her, but she has a knack for the the for the beauty area. Um, she majored in cosmetology and she's able to um, do hair and all of that. And so uh, and then my second daughter, had voice her voice got her the scholarship but she has the knack for children uh, she's over our children's ministry at the church she has a knack for children and so she works in the school system and right now they have assigned her to children who are autistic but all of them were given a foundation their foundation was the Lord Jesus Christ but then I also knew there was something there um, that God had placed there. I didn't, but I needed to nurture it. That's what it means by train up a child. Find the direction in which that child should go and you help foster it and, 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 and feed it. Feed, feed the child. Feed, feed that thing in your child and watch God. Now, they may do some stuff off, but you did your part. You can't make them, but you have done your part. When they're under your roof, there's certain things that you're responsible for. And so... I still say that whether you're 15, 5, 20, 25, 30, 75, you need to know what is it you should be doing now. Um, if the Lord tells you to go and do some protesting, make sure it's God. But we need to have a grip on not just our lashing with the tongue and, and talking about how awful things are that's a coward to do that and then have opinions and then argue and go on and doing nothing about it. Everybody's not called to do the same thing in everything. Now, all of us are called to pray, but there's some things that we actually have to put our hands in 
to rectify, help rectify, to save some of our children or save those who would have gone that direction to uh, take the lives of people, uh, to do um, uh, just awful things uh, to people. I was just watching, um, y'all know I love the old black and whites. I was just watching uh, Perry Mason and it's amazing that um, that was on today and I was um, watching that and um, they had this small town, small community and you know everybody's cloaking for the other one and and you come to town, you don't come in here changing anything. And so this lady was a teacher there. Her husband was deceased and she had a little boy uh, and she taught in the school system there. But um, there was some underlying evil going on, selling liquor, liquor to the, uh, just something going on in the community. And so they wanted to hang this woman. They wanted to, the mothers all got together because they felt like she was the reason this was going on and that was going on. And so um, nobody took responsibility for each of their children. They they just, just said, you came in here and you the reason. Nobody tried to find the truth. And so, of course, you know, with the, the way the storyline goes, uh, Mason comes in and he serves as the attorney for this young, this teacher. And, and when they start trying to uh, really, when they little bitty things start coming out, then you see the faces of the ones who said certain things and done certain things that kept this cancer uh, growing in the community. Uh, and so this lady needed somebody to speak up on her behalf. And of course, Perry Mason comes to the forefront. He brings uh, his uh, private detective and he checks on this and finds this. And bottom line, all of that small talk, all of that big talk, all that behind the scenes talk, they were absolutely wrong. They had condemned this woman and threatened her. The mothers, these were good women who had now turned, you know, uh, and they came to her door and they were threatening her and what have you. What should we be doing when things like this go on? Don't take matters into your own hands. Hear the voice of God. The part you play is important when he tells you to do it. And, and it's a shame that, um, you know, that's what they do when they're uh, teenagers. You do when you're a teenager is um, because it's your friend and your friend doesn't like somebody else, then you don't like them either. Ah, how you going to do that in the body of Christ? When the Lord himself is love, how, how are you going to do that like that? But it happens. Women do it all the time. Nobody, nobody's matured enough. We, we still. Uh, uh, I'm an older woman. I'm not getting ready to get in the middle of a fight with two younger women, and and take this one side of it and all that. You're not mature either. You're just putting fuel to the fire. Go sit yourself down and get some sense. Go get some wisdom. You should be coming in there to bring the parties together or to to bring um, a compromise or something. We don't have time for that. Y'all see how many people are leaving here? My CNA told me this morning, her children's uh, grandfather and somebody else's look like leaving in the in her family. Uh, we, we don't have the time. We do not have this kind of time. It's so much to be done for the kingdom. Is what you're doing kingdom oriented? Ask yourself, what should we be doing right now? Should be up. We should be be all on Facebook giving our opinions about what's happening. Because what happened in Memphis is a worldwide thing. Do 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 we need another one of your words or not another voice speaking what fifty uh, percent of the people are saying? Do we need another voice to speak what five percent of the people are saying? Do we need another voice? We need to hear the voice of God. This damage has been done, but. How did it happen? What do we do now? And I, I venture to say that the church is responsible when we don't do what we're supposed to do. We can't control anything, but we certainly can make sure we've done our part. What the Bible specifically tells us or generally tells us that we are to go and to teach and to 
minister to and share the gospel and and that we're to nurture our own grandchildren. If your if your son or daughter or um, in law son in law daughter they're not doing their job, do what you can to step up to the plate as a granny. Teach them. Say, look, I'll keep I'll keep them. You know, you gotta have wisdom. I'll keep them this weekend, and you pour Christ into them. Because sometimes it takes the grown children a while to get their lives together, and, and maybe they won't ever. But you, as a, 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 a blood relative, that may be what God is calling you to do. Call those grandparents and say, look, I'll keep them tonight, and I'll keep them once a month. And, uh, poor, and they, when you leave here and leave a legacy, they'll say, one thing about it, my granny told me about Christ. So if they ever get into a crisis, granny has planted something there. Hallelujah. And so I just, um, I don't speak out. You don't ever hardly hear me speak out on, on, on things like that, that are blasted all over and this happened or that happened. I just pray and ask God to, to show me what he wants me to do uh, in the midst of this. What responsibility do I take in the middle of this? And he just may say, uh, foster one of the children in your church. Uh, take one. I had one. Um, she. Um, some other forces were going on. Grandmother was trying to hold her and teach her and train her because her mama was just out there. And I did what I could uh, while she was at least under the, the 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 rule of her grandmother at the church. And and so good morning, dear. Good morning, um, Mother Jackson. And um, she loves to read. And I would go on Amazon, buy her books and then there were books on her list at school. And she, at that time, she was like a, an introvert. And, and uh, I talked to her and she'd tell me what was going on at school. And I would talk to her um, and let her unload on me. Sometimes they can do better with other people uh, that are not blood relatives. But God gave her to me for that period of time. So if she ever kind of gets herself back together, she can remember mother wesson and she can remember her granny because we took that time when that door was oh jesus that door opened good morning uh sheila good morning darling when that door opens when god opens a door you know it he makes it smooth like i i didn't know if i could go and speak yesterday like the pastor had asked me and i said well i got to pray about it because i've got my husband i'm taking care of i can't you know, be mingling with a whole lot of people and come back here to him. And God just worked that thing out. It just smoothly because I was to go there. There was a word for that house. When when an op, when a door opens people, you know it. And you know, uh, you might not want to do it. You better put your flesh and sit it down. You better obey what the Lord tells you to do and make sure that it's him. He'll give you, I ask for confirmations. I asked for a confirmation this morning about something from yesterday. He gave me before nine o'clock, he had given me two confirmations. And um, I thanked him for that. So look for doors. Whew, that's somebody type that in. Look for open doors. Keep your eyes, your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears open for doors that God opens keep to keep them open for the doors and when the door is open it's going to be right in front of you what did the Bible say I have set before you an open door and I promise you if you yield it the Holy Spirit will give you what you're going to do after he tells you to go through the door, he's going to give you instructions. He's going to give you directives. You may experience some fight. You may be resisted by some people. Uh, you may upset some people. But if you, as long as you know that God opened that door and that he sent you, the rest is left up to the Lord. Do what you're going to do and leave. Take your exit because whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen.
You're just an instrument. But keep your eyes and ears open to hear the voice of God and let him tell you which door or doors are open that you must go through. Some of us are having turmoil now because we're not being fulfilled. And when you're not being spiritually fulfilled, you're not comfortable. You don't know what's going on. Excuse me, going on with you, but you understand that something is wrong. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you so much, Tamika. I was glad I kept looking for you. You know, these little eyes getting kind of fuzzy at times. I'm looking for my other spiritual daughter. She said, I was there and I saw the outfit that I had for her uh, that I thought was her and it was her. So it was a delight to be there with you all yesterday. Yes, but understand that while all this turmoil is going on, Memphis and other places, y'all stop the gabbing. Most of the people gabbing ain't doing nothing. Come on now. If God gives you to speak out, it's going to be profound. It's going to be effective. Don't just join the bandwagon because it was just so terrible. It was just so God already knows all of that. What is your part in bringing this to the judgment of God or bringing this to where uh, he can be glorified out of the situation. What is your part? I venture to say that most of us are not witnessing like we should. Perhaps the, even the young man that lost his life, perhaps we could have been one of the ones to witness to him before he checked out. We don't know if we don't stay in that place in God. Could have been one of the offices. Maybe God, uh, he grew up in your church and you never took time out. He told you to say certain things to him and you didn't do it. We need to take responsibility as a church. And we need to stay now open. The question is, where do we go from here? What do we need to be doing? Well, the Bible has already spoken to that. We're supposed to be uh, preaching the gospel. We're supposed to be witnessing. We're supposed to be gathering people under our wings so that we can nurture them and and help them to grow in the things of God. We Everybody has a part to play. Everybody has their part to play. So don't, but don't tell, other than pray, those general basics, you can't tell me what action to take to go do something. That is a rhyme word to me. It's a rhyme word to you. Because he may speak to you and say, uh, you as a Sunday school teacher, I need you next Sunday to deal with this. Pull it into your lesson or whatever. Then you're doing your part. Everybody's not called to go out physically and do things. Um, sometimes we're called just to obey somebody who's, who, whom he sent out and show support that way. Sometimes it's a financial, give your financial support to this or um, be a part of the program that can... We need to be alerted to use. God didn't give you these gifts for you to stand up before people all the time. Whatever he's given to you, he will strategically and uniquely use it in these times of turmoil. And during these times, all of this, all of this, we got our part. But don't judge me because what he told you to do is not what he told me to do. Now, now we do know we need to be praying. We do know that we do know we need to stand the word of God and be uh, updated and upgraded in our understanding of what's going on. But specifically, God will give to you a rhema word. And he'll tell you, Vivian, I need you to say this when you're up or I need you to go. And do this, or I need you to set up a program for children. Da 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 da. He will give you according to what tools he's given to you, according to the anointing he's given to you, and you'll know because the door will open, and you'll know it's God, whether you want to do it or not. You'll know because you're close enough to him to know. Okay, he's wanting me. You might not know what, how you're going to do it. He'll, he'll, he's anointed you and it will click. It will, it will just, it will happen in you and then it will work itself out. So don't get so involved in, uh, like I said, a lot of people all on their Facebook and social media saying, oh, this, 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 and you're doing absolutely nothing about it. 
And I wonder if you would have done something about it, if you had known beforehand it was going to happen, what would you have done? We have to understand that we're different in the body of Christ. We're different in the kingdom of God. <laughs> the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. We can take back our communities if we each hear what God has, what God is speaking to us and do what God gives us to do in accordance with the gifting, in accordance with his anointing. He will protect us. He will guide us. He will lead us. So where do we go from? Where do you individually, where do you go from here? What part do you play in all of this while you're alive and well? What part? That's it. That's it. What part do you play in any of this? So Facebook is not always the, the, the platform that you need for uh, what's going on. He, God may not want you to say a word, but make sure before you uh, start picking and typing that it's something that God has told you to say or something that God has told you to do. Don't join the bandwagon. It helps absolutely nothing. And it's a bunch of, and we mean well. That's what's scary, you all. <clears throat> we mean well. That's what's so scary. We mean well. But I, my message yesterday was the title of my book, We Are Saved, But We Are Lost in Church. We're lost. We don't know what to do, which way to go, because we don't have that close relationship with the Lord. We're not doing those things that keep us in line with him and in sync with him and, and then obey when he says do things. So the church is falling down on its job. And you got to know when to hold and when to fold. And so you, you, I'm not given to get on here and talk about, you know, the community issues and um, all of that. Um, if he tells me to do that, I will. But I'm not going to get on here because... It's just so awful and I'm joining with everybody else. I'm not doing it because, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let me tell you this. Sometimes when we join in with the people, whatever percentage of the people, join in with the most of the people, join in with what the half of the people are saying, sometimes we're adding fuel to the fire. God's trying to put the fire out. And our mouths and what we are saying, and it appears like, oh, this is everybody thinks this. And so then you start jumping on that side because there's so many people voicing their opinion. And what you get, what happens, you get caught up in people's opinions when at first you really didn't have an opinion. You heard what happened, but you really didn't have an opinion, but you formed an opinion because of what the majority of the people were saying. Don't do that. You know, there a lot of times the a majority, that's the broad way. That's the way you don't even want to go sometimes. Hear God, hear his word, know what his word says and do that. Believe that, hold to that. I don't care who fights against you. I remember a thing came up in our church years ago. We hadn't even built the building we're in. And everybody in our small church was giving their opinion. And here I'm going, the first lady, I'm going like, I want to I want to agree with them. I really do. And it was just the, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. These were people who were uh, leaders in our church and they had taken an opinion about something. And I couldn't feel it. And my husband wasn't saying anything. I don't even know if he knew uh, what was actually going on behind his back. And I'm go I felt so bad that I wasn't thinking like they were thinking. And it must be right because these people said it. Really? I learned from that one, you all. That was a big in my life. It, it really was hurtful. And I was standing and I realized I was standing by myself. And that's the first time y'all heard me testify about that black hole I went into. I went into that black hole because I felt isolated. I felt confused. And I said, okay, God, what, what am I missing? Why can't I believe? Why can't I embrace this? And he spoke these words to me. 
this lady years later came back and uh, apologized to me. One of them did. One that one that said, <laughs> went back and said thank you. One young one lady came back to me years later. You all, she was even no longer in Memphis. She found me, I think, on Facebook, and she called me. She had my number anyway. I think she was a former member of our church. And she repented to me. She said, we never should have done this. And I was going like, God, I took a stand, but I, I suffered because I wanted to believe that I was wrong because they seemed to be right. Mm, 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 mm. I felt like that's right, Sister Johnson. I, I felt so alone and I didn't have my girlfriend. Would, uh, I don't know if I told her about all then. But I got so, bless you, 1010. Hey, girl, <laughs> you do, do the same, darling. All right. Um, I felt so rejected and I felt, and I, I, like I said, I kept saying, I, they got to be uh, right and I'm wrong. But I couldn't shake it. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with what they were saying. And so they isolated me. It's like they weren't talking to me. They were saying things, and I'd get it sort of, um, you know, on the sideline. Yes, baby. Yes, darling. I felt so bad. And I felt so bad that I went into this black hole. And in this spiritual black hole, I could look up and see, like, somebody looking over at me, looking down, like somebody had buried me down there. But, you know, there was dirt around me. And when I would try to crawl to the get out of there, the ground started crumbling. And I knew what that meant spiritually for me, but I couldn't come out of it. And so these people had come to this opinion and the, their opinion would have been detrimental to the whole ministry. And pastor had no clue. Oh, so much went on in that thing until I don't even like to really talk about it a lot. And so finally I went in prayer and I started repenting. You know, I was taking it to myself. Oh, please forgive me. And I, I, I'm feeling like this and this. And I heard, I asked the Lord, what is wrong? And he said, they have been bitten by an asp. I'm going like, I knew an asp was a snake. I let you know it was God, you all. I didn't know what kind of a snake an asp was, A-S-P. When I looked it up, you all, I literally went and looked it up in the dictionary. And it is a type of snake that once it bites you, the poison, in, in, it goes through the whole system instantly. Now, y'all know that had to be God. I knew what an asp was, but I didn't know uh, what type of snake it was. Then I then then because God knew my heart, then he started kind of bringing me out of it. Like, okay. See, you, you're thinking it's you, but now, uh-uh, uh-uh. He said, I've spoken to you. Now, he gave me something that he knew that only he could know because I didn't know the meaning of an asp. I just knew it was a serpent. I just knew it was a snake because you got the rattlesnake and all. He spoke the word to me, asp. But nobody uses that uh, in their language every day. Nobody talks a lot about an asp. You there say a snake or uh, 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 um, all kinds of you know, uh, snakes that we talk about. Uh, that that are dangerous, rattlesnakes and what have you. And so I won't go into all the details, but from that point, I start kind of coming up out of it, coming up out of it. And then later I began to find out things. And so after a while, my husband got kind of in wind of some of it. And uh, needless to say, um, the involvement was centered around this this issue. It was a, around this negative issue, which would have, which really was disrespectful to my husband. Uh, it was totally um, going to be used to tear him down, to destroy him. But at the outset, you couldn't see it. It sounded like a good spiritual prophetic thing, and it was of the devil. It was it was not the people were the devil, but they had been convinced this is the dangerous part you all they had been convinced that this was god and it only took what it only takes one person that everybody believes that that person leads and people follow them in that church or in that ministry or on that job it only takes one and it's roll it's gone and anybody else come against it anybody else say anything different you're getting ready to be fought 
I was far. And the Lord sent my girlfriend. We were we were friends, but we weren't really that close and uh as we are now. And um she worked at Fed at the time and she knew what I was going through by this time and uh she came to my home. I had just moved into the home that I was in. And so that was around 1990, what was that, 1990, 1992 or something like that. And she says, I'm going to come by there from work. And she came by and she's a no nonsense person. And she came by and we had an empty room. I had just moved in that house. We didn't have any furniture up front and I was looking for furniture. And she came back then, little room, extra bedroom. We had six bedrooms, actually. And this was downstairs. And it's a room that we took as an office space, like a little library for. I did a lot of writing and studying back there. And she came. And I had one little sofa I had bought from a, from an estate sale. And uh, that's where I would go and pray. And she sat on that sofa with me. I'll never forget that. I don't remember her exact words, but she did say to me, she did pray with me. She laid hands and prayed with me back then. My husband was at work. Children were at school. And she told me, um, don't you ever let anybody, da, 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 da. She went on like that. But And I was still, the enemy was still trying to pull me with it in my spirit, but I had to learn. I didn't know how to fight then like I know how to do warfare now. I knew how to do warfare, but I was not on that growth level to do it like I am able to do it now, like I, I understand how to do it now. And I went into that home. That was the second time, to be honest, that I had gone into that home. And one of the phone conversations that she had with me, and I y'all have heard me say, if you follow me, I'll never forget it. She said, I need you to remember what it felt like while you were in this home. And she said, so next time when you get to the edge of the ground, I want you to remember what it feels like to be in that hole. I need you to back it up. I have not to this day. I've had some stuff go on now, but I have not to this day allowed the devil to take me back down into that black hole. Covered, I almost look like dirt, nothing but dirt around me. And to look up to see outside of, of the the uh, uh, outside of the hole, up above the hole, it was too far for me to try to climb. And when I looked like I was trying to climb to get out, the ground was crumbling, which meant I was I was stuck down there. And I, from that day to this, I I will never. I have not allowed the enemy to take me down in there like that. You must know God for yourself. I keep stressing this because something's coming up on us, you all. We haven't even gotten over the pandemic. We still got stuff, that stuff going on. Something else is coming. And if we're not where we need to be, we're not where we need to be. We won't make it. I keep saying this, people... You know, I've been just saying, oh, this Mother Wesson, but I'm telling you now, if you do not stay in the word, we, you know we need to pray. But if you do not stay in the word of God and the word is God speaking to us, if you do not stay in the word of God, when you uh, go through whatever we're going to go through, it may be something you're going through individually, plus what's going on in the world or in our nation. You won't be able to handle. You'll be saved and 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 powerless. Oh, there it is, right there. Somebody type that in. You will be saved but powerless because you need a rhema word. He keeps saying to me they're going well, before this pandemic came and it was. I mean, really got bad. He kept kept saying to me, "I'm going to get um a remnant out of a remnant." I sort of understood, but later on, I fully understood. That's what he said about this pandemic. Uh, he wasn't really speaking a lot to a lot of people. We didn't know, okay, we're coming out of this. Nobody had that prophetic word. But I heard him say, I'm going to get a remnant out of a remnant. I'm going to have some people uh, that will be in the church, 
but they're going to be powerless. I'm going to have some people that will be in the church, but they will know my power because I'm going to give them a rhema word. And it's that word right there that's going to sustain you through all of it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it will sustain us. We won't go under. We won't be in that black hole. I, I know that with, with everything within me. And so he said, the key is get in my word because the, clo- the deeper you get in my word, the closer you're coming to me. And then he said, so I will give, he said, I will, he said, it would be like the blood spread over the doorpost. When, when God saw the blood uh, spread over the doorpost, he passed by, death passed by that house because of the blood, which represents the, the coming savior, the cross. It, it was pushing us uh, really uh, in, in the uh, eternity time, if I can call it that. To, to jump us re- really over to the cross. It was representing the cross. And he said, uh, if I pass you, I come to you, you're a believer, and I'm ready to, Im- oh, Jesus, I'm ready to impact you. I'm ready to bless you. Yeah, things going around you. I'm not fixing that. He said, but if I come to you to try to give you a word, he said, I can't give you a word if there's no word. In- I can't give you a rhyme word if there's no word in you. And that's what he's saying to me. I'm telling you all, uh, my girlfriend, we've been talking, God has shown her differently. She's in the prophetic area and um, it's something else coming. And if you don't have the word of God in you, then God says, there's no need in me giving you a rhyme of word because if you don't understand uh, the depth of my word, why would I give you, because an, you're not going to understand it. You're not going to know what to do with it. I give you a rhema word because the rhema word for you individually, for your situation, is based upon my word, my logos. And I said, oh, my God. I said, thank you, Father. So I'm trying to hear what he's saying in the word of God. And he keeps speaking to me and giving me things. And I want to hold fast to these things. And I got to repent. I've not been journaling. Because you know, being caregiver and doing so much, I've not been journaling like I need to and like I would love to. Because when I go dig up, I have a crate and I have um, my, all my Bibles in there. I had about 15, 20 Bibles and I kept some and then I let a few go. But I have two or three journals that I hand, would handwrite in. And when I go back, it, it blesses me to go back to 1991 where God spoke something to me through, uh, to my, to give for me to keep for myself or someone poured into me and, and said, um, uh, things to me back then, back then. And I'm going like, Oh, and it's like vivid. It's like, Oh, wow. And it's like vivid. And so, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Sister Johnson. All right. Wow. See, that means a lot when your children know that you, yep, have money saved, a house well stocked. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So so he's saying now, I don't know what this is, is coming, but he's saying now that we're going to have to be loaded with the word. We're going to have to be full of the word of God and, and the spirit of God works in conjunction with the amount of words you have in you. <laughs> Amen. So. I don't know what I'm doing here, y'all. Oh, my God. What am I doing? Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was doing there. But anyway, um, we've got to do this. He, because when, let me tell you, he's he's training me now. Because when I hit some, some rough roads here in my home, um, some things I have to deal with, situations I have at the church, um, and the devil will try to take your mind, or he will, if you let him, he will take your mind to panic mode. He'll take you from calm to panic mode. And between being calm and being disturbed and going to panic mode, what, oh, Jesus, thank you, Father. 
What keeps you calm is a rhema word. Watch this, you all. The Holy Spirit speaking now. I teach you, but this is the Holy Spirit speaking now. Say, for example, if he tells you um, you're going to lose your, your uncle, or he tells you, um, he, you see signs of, you get no, you get a call. And they say that such and such a person like this baby this morning said uh, her children have an aunt that is uh, they're not expecting her to live. Let's let's take that for an example. OK, when you first get that news, it's disturbing. Right. OK, it's, it's negative. But because you were calm first, the enemy wants to move you from calm to panic. So he'll maybe just let you be disturbed. You're scared to answer your phone. Da, 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 da. They're going to tell you that this aunt is gone. Here's what the Lord has just spoken to me. And I've walked it out myself here. He says, if you remain, Jesus, I thank you. If you are calm, doing what you do every day, cleaning or whatever you're doing, and understand that in any moment, Something could come and disturb that. But if you know the scripture, you've quoted it, you believe it with your head. Watch it. Watch this, you all. I'm going to have to uh, repost this, this broadcast. Uh, you, you know it with your head. You believe it with your head because you've seen it, it happen in other people's lives. But the scripture is... Uh, I will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me. Now, that's scripture. You know it. You can know it in the sense that you know it in your head. You can quote it. But if you, oh, Jesus. But if you've never used it and tested it, oh, my God, it won't work. Y'all hear me well? It is the knowing beyond here. The knowing has to be experiential and it has to be uh, in the knowledge part of us, the knowledgeable part of us. And but it has to be tested. Jesus was sent on the pinnacle of that temple. He was being tested. Watch this. Now, this is just coming to my mind. The Bible says. He spoke to the devil. Man shall not live by bread alone. Y'all, this is powerful for me right here to me. But by every word that proceedeth, mean continuing to proceed. Don't mean just come out of his mouth right then. The word that constantly comes out. But by every word that proceeds out of your Bible, out of the mouth of God, God's word is his will. It's him speaking to us. This thing is profound to me. And so if you've never been tested with that word to actually put it into practice and say it works. My girlfriend has a uh, an Asian spiritual daughter. She has her belief, but she, she believes in my my girlfriend. She knows what. My girlfriend, she don't understand it being not a Christian, but she understands that when my girlfriend speaks and ministers to her, it's something happens to her. She does. Um, she works for I won't call this uh, association, but she works for a government association. And her job make bukus of money is to test products. I have products now that I use because my girlfriend said she told me about this product. And my girlfriend tried it and I tried it. And so we now use it. Jesus, have mercy. I feel God right now. And so God is saying that if you've never been in situations where you can attest to the fact that this, this really works, you will not be able to use that word because you don't trust it. You're still going to jump to panic mode. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I'm telling you now, throughout the day, sometimes news comes or somebody won't act right or somebody's making you feel something comes to disturb my peace. But you got to know the word of God in the fact that you've used it. You put it to the test, not the fact that I 
That's why I don't, people are, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Satan is not moving because he realized there's no power behind what you speak. Because if you use that and you've used it and the devil knows you've used it and you speak it with power, baby, he got to go. But he knows it's a manby pamby thing. It's just you saying stuff because you heard the church folks say, just rebuke the devil. But baby, there has to be some power behind it. What makes the power work? The fact that you tried that power, you put it to the test. You know it works so you say it with all the authority and the power that God's given to you. Most of us don't do it. This is why it's going to be, this is why you see church people that are panicking. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm sharing with you now, in the midst of what's going on, your question should be, okay, God, what's next? What is my responsibility in here? I'm a part of the body of Christ. This stuff is happening. And the church has the power in the earth. Come on, come on now. Uh, I know the government has what they have, but the church has the power. The reason the world is still standing is because the church was given the power to hold things together. It's because the church is still here. Once we're lifted out of here, it's going to be pure chaotic. That's just how much power God has given to us because we are part of him. And he's a part of us. What you going to do with all this power before you leave here? No, you're not called to do everything, but you need to know specifically. Well, you need to know generally what God says. He told us to pray. He told us to get in his word. He told, come on, fast and whatever. Those things you know. But he also gives you a specific assignment in the midst of whatever it is, whether it's in your home, in the world, in the community. Okay, Vivian, this was this is what I need you to do. He may simply tell you to pray. He may tell you to pick up the phone and call a person that's involved. You need to be close enough to 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 God to know what He's saying, and then be quickly to do it. Sometimes we we don't we're not quickly to do things because our flesh is saying, you know, you can't do that. We're not thinking God's going to do it through us. It's doubt. Sometimes we just don't want to do it because it requires of us to let some things go or to do some suffering. But you better get over that and begin to learn to obey God. Do what he's told you to do to his will and to his glory. That's where we are right now. What, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And so even with me, um, I've asked God, uh, it didn't relate specifically to the killings here, the killing here, but relates period to the overall jigsaw puzzle. What is my little piece in this puzzle? What is it you want Vivian Wesson to do? I'd like to go somewhere and sit and, and, and read my Bible and watch a little TV and, and take care of my husband and this and that, all those things that I do on a daily basis. But what is it you are specifically telling me to do? that is outside of my routine. One of the things as I sit here and think, and I've shared it with you, he's saying that I'm getting ready to open some doors and the doors that I'm going to open, I'm going to use you because I wired you this way. You were wired before you were even conceived. You were wired before the foundation of the world. You're cut out of me for, and you are called for this. I'm getting ready to send you into arenas, into a setting or settings where you will speak my word uh, regardless. You may cry behind it. You may want to hide behind it. But when I call you, you're going to speak and you no, nobody will have a dog in the fight. You're just going to stand and people are going to be shocked where I send you. You're going to be shocked where I send you. He's, it, this is my sovereign will. Now, there are going to be some, I'm sure, other things I'm going to do on a daily basis. I got to hear God, though. One of them is what I'm doing now. I encourage you, don't get on the bandwagon with people. And, oh, this is this. And then you judging this one because they didn't watch the video of the thing that happened in Memphis. And you over here saying this. And please. And none of this has been sanctioned by the Lord for you to open your mouth and be saying anything. Only speak when God tells you to speak. Only say those things that God will only give you what to do 
that's going to make things better, make you better, make some people better. But just the fact that you can go on here and put that out there like that, don't just put yourself out like that if God didn't tell you to do that. Don't do that. You're supposed to be preaching the gospel. You're supposed to be giving people the, that's one thing I know all of us should be doing, encouraging other people. If you were close to that family, encourage that. But don't get out there because every, everybody's saying this, everybody's saying that, and then you want to, oh yeah, I said that, go sit down, quit. Don't do that like that. Speak only as of the oracles of God. Speak only those things that God gives you to say, oh, it is like a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. It's, it's hitting nowhere. There's no target. It's not hitting in, in any way that's going to be positive or uh, effect change. And some of us during all of this need to be working on ourselves so that when God does give us an assignment, we're ready, we're confident, and we're ready to move out and obey. I just want to come on and, and share this with you on this this morning. I'm going to get off of here. Um, I've got one more thing I need to take care of that I had on my to-do list. And I would like to kind of sit before the Lord because there's some things that I need to, to meditate about. Um, yes. Yes, yes, Diane. Thank you, thank you. Amen. So I love uh, each and every one of you. Um, I'm going to post this. Uh, I'm going to upload this to uh, YouTube and to LinkedIn as a drop-in. Um, I have a whole little section there for my drop-ins uh, on YouTube. I don't have all of them. I'm, as I go through them uh, occasionally, I'll upload the ones the Lord gives me to upload. This one is one of those. Uh, there's some things that I said that were profound to me that didn't come uh, didn't come from me. They came through me <laughs> from the Lord. And so somebody else uh, might need to hear this. And so I'm going to upload this one and I'm going to um, upload it to YouTube and to LinkedIn. Amen. You do the same, Diane. God bless your sweetheart and everybody that's on here. Um Let's see. Those who have not made themselves known, God bless you. Shonda, God bless you, baby. Thank you all for supporting me. You supported me. I told Pastor he was in very alert this morning. He was smiling. Uh, and so, uh, Darlene, God bless you. Trail, hey, baby. Alicia, all of the sweethearts on here. Ten Ten, she's gone to work. She's in the school system. Bless you, darling. Um, Kiki, bless you if you're still here. Um, Beverly, bless you, sugar. Sister Moore, Sister Sheila Moore, Sheila Moore, Bear McGee, bless you, darling. Uh, let's see, Mother Fanny Jackson, bless you, sweetheart. Tamiko, yes, yes, yes. Let me see, Sharon, I trust you're feeling well, baby. Uh, let's see, Sharon, um, Cedria, bless you, darling. And Judy Kett, I'm not familiar with that name, but God bless you. Um, thank you so much, Judy HVP Kett, okay. I think I named all the ones that are not a part of my, my church. Bless you, bless you, Kiki. Amen. All right, I'm going to get off of here. My dinner is figured out. I don't have to, I'm going, I've got some greens in my freezer, and I pull those out and I'm thawing those and I've got some small catfish fillets. I'm going to season those bad boys. Um, I season them with garlic powder, onion powder, a little black pepper, lemon juice. And um, I'm going to put, a, a, I think, a little bit of the Bragg's, um, Oh, it was an Italian um, salad dressing. You can marinate it in it as well. And I'm going to cook them in the crock, and not the crock pot, I'm sorry. Cook them in my fryer. Um, and then I'm going to have the greens and I may make a little potato salad. That's quick. I don't have to do a lot with that or baked potato. Uh, Pastor is excited because 
he has a, a yeah, pastor has a taco soup. You know, Lita loves to um, try to, um, different recipes, but she has a taco soup that she makes. And it's like a soup and all the ingredients are in it. And it has the uh, chips, the um, corn chips around it, tortilla chips uh, that you dip it in with. And you put the sour cream in the middle of that soup. And so she made some, I can't do tomatoes, so I'm going to eat what I just told you. And uh, he was excited when I told him uh, that's what he was going to have today. And of course, if he wants anything else, I may uh, give him a little potato salad or something. I have to watch his carbs. And so I don't have to really be worried about dinner. Uh, and if I don't do a uh, potato salad or baked potato, I'll do a um, little mac, um, non-dairy mac and cheese. Yeah. So that gives me a little more time to do some other things. And so I thank God each day for every little bitty thing I, I'm grateful to him for. All right. Love you. With the love of the Lord. Love you and you can do nothing about it. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. <laughs>